cost money, man. That's yeah. is that what it is? Yeah. Cost money? Cost yeah, money, but bro? It doesn't matter because you're gonna pay for it. It's fine. So I should get two? No, just one. You don't want one? Well, if so it I works, should get, I should get two. If it works, <laughs> then buy a second then one. Then buy a second. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't even know what we're talking about yet, though, so I guess it really doesn't matter. We got to figure that out first. Exactly. You have to PFA in order for us to uh, spend the money. Oh, God. Yeah. Got to clean off your scissors now. I know, man. Oh, it's so, so sticky. Yeah, this is so nice. I love this. So sticky. Yeah, you got to cut that top. And yeah, it's going to stick out too far. Gotta lose that tip right there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so bad. How's everybody doing? Oh, wonderful. I was just watched the Tweak 88 video. Cool. Rockford P1 components or Type R components? Uh, Type R. I'm taking Type R over P1s. P1s. One. P, P, oh, P1s. P1. P1s or Type R's? Yeah. I'm buying Type R's. <laughs> if that's my choice, that's what I'm doing. Type bars? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm way more happy with those. Uh, what panel of the car is that back deck? No, this is actually, it is the back of the car, but it's the trunk lid. Or not the trunk lid, the um, tailgate lid. We're working on a Cherokee? Uh, yep. Cher Grand Cherokee. Is it a Grand Cherokee? It's a Grand Cherokee. Oh, it is a Grand Cherokee. It's uh, probably 2020-ish. 2020. -ish, 2020. It's, not, it's not the mega, you know, it's Wagoneer. It's not a Grand Wagoneer. It's just a Grand Cherokee. Um, this is what's going in it. <laughs> let, me, let me get the perspective on this. Ooh, it's, a, it's salty. So he's getting a Salt Dash 4. So it's a lot of fun there. Sundown or Death Bounce, yep. Uh, honestly, I don't know enough about either one. I don't know enough about Death Bounce. We've put in some Sundown stuff like this, obviously, is Sundown. Uh, he supplied it. Um, so I, I've never done anything with Death Bounce. So I wouldn't be able, I would not be good for that. Auto Center match, under seat sub. Ooh, I, honest, under seat? Does, does... Yeah, 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 for the BMWs. Oh! Yeah. Ooh, that's a tough yeah, one. Rockford T. I mean, I have a... The Rockford T. No, I heard the, the match. You did hear the match. Yeah. I've never heard the Audison. I did hear the match. But the T, Rockford I'm, makes that T. Yeah. That's like a T4 or some oh, shit. Even, something like that. Uh, Ground Zero makes, you know. Let's not get all crazy. I know. <laughs> That's not, there's a lot of companies that make them now. Um, you know. I mean, match is... It's, it's the match cool. worked. It, it was nice. Um, I, I feel... I feel like it's still just gonna sound like a mid bass. I mean, I still want to add a sub to the trunk it's for my personal bass. for my personal uh, amount of. Hey, I am Drew. I am Dean. Um, okay. Uh, Wilson Audio Dino. That amp did double its power. Great, great. This is what we needed to do more power. What's up, Flynn Audio? That's what we do. Yeah, it was hard enough trying to find a 400 amp fuse for it. So. That, that was fun today. Uh, speaking of that, so one of the things that Stinger makes is this guy right here, where you have a zero gauge input and then you have two zero gauge outputs, but it takes, you, you put two fuses in it, as you can see, they're kind of, they're joined there. So uh, we have the two for our second battery that we're adding. And then these two add up to 400 amps. So that'll be for this amplifier. So this will be in the back. There's going to be the switching relay between it. So this is the 500 amp switching relay. We'll go between the two. Um, it, for those of you guys that have never done anything with a modern Jeep Drank Cherokee, uh, the battery for this is located up underneath the seat. And it is a pain in the butt to get to. So if you'll notice, there's actually two batteries. So it has like this little motorcycle battery that's right here. And then the car battery is located right here. This battery has to come out first, but in order to do this install, you wanna pull the factory, the big ground here first, and then pull the secondary ground, then pull this positive. Once you've pulled those three terminals, the car is, 
it's, I mean, after these two, the car is pretty safe, but now you can get to the 10 millimeter that's down here to remove the bracket that holds this. You gotta pull this out. Then you have to actually pull out the bottom bracket that holds this battery. So once that comes out, then you can slide this battery back and you can get to the positive there. And then once you get to that positive, the battery, if the seat is pushed all the way forward, the battery will slide right out. And then you can slide this one in, put that in. But if you'll notice, we already have the power wire in place because it's almost impossible to get to this bolt here in the front. So, and it's just a pain. So what we've done is we wired it in, we built our mount here. This is our bracket, it's screwed into place up here. It holds this fuse. So it's coming out around across and then it's, right now it's just chilling right here, but we wanted to get this all in place while we had it all apart. Cause we didn't want to go back into this just because it was so hard to get in here to swap out the battery. Um, not doing lithium. This isn't mine. I didn't sell any of this. So this is the customer's customer's stuff. Uh, so we have the excess power here up underneath the seat. Now, if you do a smaller battery, like you could fit it underneath that seat because there's the same hole underneath there. He opted to not do that. He opted to do a really big battery. And that's what that hole is for. So we made this, this is the factory tub. Fernando's been working on sound treatment here and then the sound treatment on the tail. He's got that done. This side is not done yet, um, but this is one piece of half inch that's sitting inside of the tub. And what I'm working on right now is getting it to where, see like right now, if it, it, it moves when you push it, because there's some depth issues. So we're building up the underside so that this will be nice and rigid. And then there's a, a bolt right here where the spare tire goes in. So we're gonna pick up the bolt so that bolt will screw this whole thing into place. The battery will slide into there. Um, but yeah, so this, the 4K will sit here. There's also an epicenter that's gonna go in, so that'll be on one of these two sides. I don't know yet. Um, so the only complaint I have about these style amplifiers, you know, these are cool, it's neat, is I'm, I'm not a fan of this bass knob. Um, I like it, you know, it's cool, it's got all this neat stuff and it does all that, but it, in a modern car, this is not the base knob you want just because it's, it's, it's not user install friendly. Like you can't make cool brackets for it. You really can't do much. Um, so we've, we've made it sit into this pocket as much as we can and we have a, a, our input is there so we can clip into it and he can still use this and this sits in the center console like right here so you'll you'll be able to get to it um but it's not like you can take it apart and flush the knob and do all the, the neat things um i think i would design a better knob if i were them but i get it it's a price point thing and whoever designs this or makes it or whatever um it's kind of that to go yeah i don't know this this it's cool that it has all this information but it just, I, I don't know. Me personally, I like just a knob, just like a knob, um, which the epicenter will have. We have to figure out where we're gonna put the knob for the epicenter. We haven't gotten that far yet. I have an epicenter. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yep, you got a new one. Uh, you can't take it apart. No, it doesn't come apart. That's a small lamp. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely tiny. But no, it doesn't come apart. It's made to just, sit like there it's all one circuit board there's no stickers you can't flip it you can't do anything with it it's all uh it's its own little thing and it, don't get me wrong manufacturers doing that for year i mean kicker has their cool uh their big base knob that's bluetooth which makes it a little bit easier and then you have like the old q class had that big base knob that was ridiculously huge so it's not like they're the first ones um it's just you know Sometimes it's just, it's the small things in life that drive you crazy. the best knobs in your opinion? Um, I like the JL style knob personally. That's just, just a, just a knob. I mean, the Amp Pro comes with just a knob. The audio control is just a knob. I mean, it has lights, but most of the time you don't use them because so they're blinding. Be just, just a light. Just I just a, like a basic a knob. knob. Okay. Yeah, audio control knobs, yeah. Uh, when getting an excess power battery, do you recommend using a capacitor? That's entirely up to you. Um, most of the time, capacitors, capacitors are just like cool voltmeters, you know, because like one little capacitor isn't going to do much for you. 
A little ground zero sound treatment. Yeah, it's a lot of ground zero sound treatment. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what that is. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Capacitors nowadays aren't as cool as they were. Maybe, if, I mean, the lithium power cells seem pretty nice, but I don't know. Lithium battery that Jeff has. The lithium battery Jeff has is pretty nice. Agree, JL is clean. Rockford is pretty basic as well. The new R2 knob is pretty pretty basic, pretty nice. Uh, the Ken the Kenwood just copied JL, so theirs is just more or less a straight copy of theirs. So theirs is super simple and easy. But caps suck. I agree. I mean, if you need a voltmeter, yep. Uh, just use batteries. I mean, batteries are the key for sure. Uh, what's the subwoofer going with? Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Sorry. I uh, got caught up in the moment back here. So, hang on. So we have a, he's getting a Gately box. So this is a big Gately monster box for 212s. And then we're going with, can't go that way. Uh, moving around, moving around. Um, so for those of you guys that are in the know, we're going with the Sundown X12 V3s. Dual one ohms. So that's what's going in there. Huge, people, huge. Um, so there you go. Great box. Oh, it's, it's going to be awesome. It's, it's, this thing is going to just be like crazy loud. There's no question about it. I have my active mid bass playing what sounds like only highs and only at loud volumes. I've tried, I've tried it in a different speaker outputs as well. I have a DSP. Do you think I blew it? Ooh. Now, see, this is a great, this is, there's a possibility you've blown it. Obviously you could take it out and take a look at it, see if it still moves, but that tool we came out with, some of you guys, we've been talking about it all last week and some of you guys purchased it. And I thank you for doing that. The IRTA, this tool right here that you can pick up at DNF tool drawer. It is an electrical RTA. So if you have an iPhone or an iDevice of any kind, what you'd want to do is figure out well, what is going to that speaker. Meaning, meaning, is there something weird, like a crossover point or the EQ is doing something strange? So if you had the IRTA, you could tap into those two wires with it and look at your iPad, play a pink noise, and you would see the signal that's going to that speaker. And that would tell you right away, all right, this, I have all my frequencies, as it were, going to the speaker, but I'm not getting the sound. That would mean that there's something wrong with the speaker, but that would be a valid test you could do, because after all, it's all about testing a hypothesis. So is the speaker blown? Well, I don't know. There's a lot of things that happen before the speaker that, I mean, obviously, yeah, you could pull it out and it goes, then yeah, it's blown. But um, testing to make sure, hey, do I have the signal there? An IRTA can be used to do that. So just just another use for being able to see the the sound coming over the wires, as it were. Uh, that should be plenty of bass. I mean, it'll be okay. We're not doing any highs. Nice. I love my Gately enclosure. Four eights, uh, 2500.1 Rockford. Ooh, nice. nice. I love that amp. What's going in the doors? Nothing. Factory, bro. It's all about the factory. It's all about, it's all bass. about that bass. That bass, no treble. It's all about that bass. That bass, no treble. And oh, that, my God. That was that wonderful. Is true. Oh, yeah, dude. And you're welcome. Uh, Gately box for the win. Two tens, Gately box, and my Mustang. Man. I love that. Convertible or hard, or, or hard top. If it fit, I, yeah. Uh, highs, mids, amp two, or just sub upgrade? Yeah, I answered that one. I have two. Four channel amplifiers. Both have only five channels on my DSP. What is best active front of passive crossover on front and rear and time line front and rears? Um, only five five channels on my DSP. Oh, that sucks. So, I mean, I, I, okay. So, if, I mean, if you have bi amp capability. All right, so five channels. Yeah, it's just your front rear sub. I'd get a bigger DSP, not going to lie. I mean, if I'm really worried about making it sound great, I'd get a d bigger DSP. However, you know, you can do bi-amp. If you, if you have a crossover that allows you to do bi-amp, 
then that would help. Uh, but you're going to use your mid base for your time alignment. So when you're setting up front and rear, use that. Or you could also just use the five channel DSP to power the front stage only. So go active front stage sub and then put the rears. All right, so hold on. Let me think this through for a minute. If I took one of the four channels and went to the... So I don't know what speakers you use, and so we're just playing along here. So each one of the suggestions I get is something you could do. And what I was going to say is the rears could just run full, uh, just no DSP, turn them down so they're only effects channels. However, depending on the speakers you have, they may be able to handle more power, in which case I'd take f two four-channel amplifiers, put channel one and two on the tweeters, three and four on the rear, no DSP, take the other four channel amp and bridge it to the mid bass out of three and four and then five off to the sub if you have a dedicated sub amp i'm assuming or if you don't have a dedicated sub amp then i'd use i'd still the rears man the rears aren't important i think an active front you might be happier you know so there's a lot you can do don't be afraid don't don't get caught up and i gotta do front rear sub uh gaily build some awesome boxes for sure he does i want to get one I do, I really do. I want to get a gateway box. Um, I don't know what I'd put it in though. It's oh, you know, I was gonna put it. I was gonna put it in Haley's. We got that big sound digital sub that we were gonna have the super box made, and then they got busy. So I should get one, and then just go him and see if you, they can make that specific for the ground. No, no, zero. I would just buy a regular. Yeah, get it specifically for the ground, for the ground zero, zero, but just a standard yeah. gateway wood box, yeah. looking all sexy. Um, have it stained pink or something. I don't know. Uh, sounds like crossovers are wrong or it's out of phase. Anything's possible, but with the RTA, you can figure that out. Uh, quality six and a half components for Tundra under 300 bucks. Check out the Morel Maximus. US at the end, Maximus. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice speakers. Solid price point. Um, wireless car play cuts in and out while driving on certain parts of the interstate highway. What signal would be jamming me up? <sighs> uh, well, it, de it depends if it's rebooting or not. If you're just losing audio, then you might want to try downloading the songs to your phone as opposed to streaming it. Streaming it. Mm -hmm. Or if you're using like Pandora or Spotify or something like that, it's going to be you're losing your th your. 3G, 5G, whatever G service it is, that's right. what's cutting it out. Because yeah. um, the phone will... Yeah. yeah. I would try a different source of music first. Like, if you're streaming Pandora, so for CarPlay one, still works don't. Just the audio? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If, it, it, if yeah. you're just losing audio, then that's your phone. Now, if it, it if, loses the whole thing... That's some form of a Wi-Fi... Cable or something. Well, no, that'd be... Well, if it's oh, wireless. It's wireless. Yeah, yeah, so that would be something that's enough to drown out the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Because that would, that would be weird. Uh, do, you feed, do you feed the tweeter into the D5310 or backwards still when front stage upgrade on premium accord? Mm, you mean the polarity flipped? No, because I have a 24 dB per octave, so they'd still play the same. They would still be positive, negative, positive, negative. The polarity would be correct because I'm not going to have a phasing issue between the crossover points of the tweeter and the mid-range because I'm going to run it at 24 dB, and that'll take care of any phasing between the two. So, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to flip them. You'd just leave them the way they are, go 24, and call it a day. Uh, can you test the ohm load on door speakers to see if they are blown? Yes, of course. Uh, you need a... So anytime you're testing the ohm load on a speaker, you kind of need one that works, and then you test everything else. So, for example, if you have your driver's door, and you test it, and it says 4.4, and you're not having any issues with it, or 3.8, or whatever it says, now when you go over to your other speakers, is there anything other than that, then you know you have an issue. Um... Yeah, especially with factory speakers, mainly because some of them have really weird ohm loads. So you need something that isn't blown to compare to see if something is blown. Oh, game night soon. Soccer. Night. Soccer night. Yeah. Uh, hard top two JLW3s. Ah, oh, that's what I thought. The Mustang. Man, I know. I need a convertible box. Yeah. Oh, you totally need that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Although I have no room in my trunk right now. 
<laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> Dude, what did I do? Oh, I bought those tools yesterday. And I was like, crap, I have no room. The reason why I have no room is I have our uh, camera bags are still in there from November because we knew we were going to need them in February. So I was like, well, we I, I don't, I don't want to have to put them away only to have to take them back out again. So they're still in the trunk, it's, which is a safe place for them. There's no cameras in them. It's just the bags. Uh, don't worry about rear fill unless he bridges uh, the eight channels to four. Yeah, it's a lot of power, though. I, I wouldn't bridge the, the, the tweeters. They don't need that. Uh, when is it a good time to book with you guys? Uh, I don't think there is any good time. It's just a matter of once you get the call, be ready to go. Yeah. I mean, that's just it. Um, and then he just kind of figures out the appointment. We have nothing to do with that. So uh, what connectors would you recommend to make a T-harness for 2017 Chevy Cruze without premium audio? I'm digging into Metra and trying to find what I can from them. I know there are some extension cables they make, but they make cables called a 70 dash something and a 71 dash something. Usually the 70 is what plugs into the factory harness. And sometimes you need two of those just because you need to pin wires that aren't normally pinned. Um, but you could also <sighs> trying to think who else would make it harness for that i don't you could look at like i data makes the dgm harness it's a d not an a uh which is to hook up which, which is a t harness for that that might also work so maybe check out idata and see if they list a harness for the ar or the dsr1 you don't have to use it it's just a t harness to get you everything you need so hi guys happy new year happy new year to you zz2 in the house hey. I love that piece. Can't wait to see you soon. Mm -hmm. No homo. Um, what is better, bringing my amp or uh, right, bridging my amp or bi amp to my front stage? If all you're looking for is power, 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 then obviously bridging your amp is going to give you that. If you're looking for control, then bi amping is going to give you the control. So. For example, if you have a speaker up high in the dash and a speaker down low in the door, and you want to be able to control the one that's closest to you, like maybe turn it down some because it's just going to be like, ah, then bi-amping is the way to go because you can turn that one, you know, once you have the gain set, you can, I know this is crazy thought, you can always go back and turn it down so that it's not blasting you out of the car and sounding ridiculous. Coldplay still works great. Oh, CarPlay still works great. Choppy. Songs are downloaded to phone. Then there's something that's interfering with the Wi-Fi. Try plugging it in. I know this sucks, but try plugging it in. Um, also, make sure you check, which I'm sure you have, but check to make sure that your radio has the most current firmware on it. Or your um, phone. And your phone, for that matter. But, like, when you know it's going to die, or it's, when you're getting close to the area, just plug it in real quick and see if that does anything. Uh, what other tools are compatible to the RTA2? I don't think my WHE Magnum RTA would do the same. I don't, I don't what other tools are compatible to the RTA2? Compatible? You mean what tools it can plug into and work? Or... Another RTA? If you have, so if you're, all right. If you're RT, if you have an RTA that has a RCA input, it'll work. It'll work on anything that has an RCA input, RTA wise. So, um, I mean, we have four different RTAs we've tested it on: the PA3, the PA3X, the M NTI Minimalizer, the PA2. Um, yeah, the DMRTA. The DMRTA uh, from Audio Control. So, if it if it has an RCA input, the IRTA will work with that. There's a jumper inside of it to go from iPhone to just an aux input. Yeah. Oh, wow, I need to pull it up. Um, how is, how, how to wire six speakers mid and high to an audio control D4.800? Two of the speakers are gonna have to be connected together. So, if you have a front set of components, meaning a tweeter and a mid bass and some rear fill, and you're looking to go all through the D4.800, then you need to 
use the passive crossovers that would come with the speakers. And if they don't have passive crossovers, you may need to get some. Um, but that's typically what we would do. So if you, you know, the, the, the box that the speaker comes with would go in, tweeters go to tweeter, mid goes to mid. And then you'd use the DMRTA for the bottom point of the uh, six and a half, the six and a half or the, 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 the lowest point of the lowest crossover point for your mid base. Yeah, that one. All right. How far away am I? Um, hello, gentlemen. What's up, Bobby? Hey, Bob. What's up, Hi Fi? Yo, yo, yo. Uh, didn't read it correctly. There's a possibility. I'm, I'm doing a lot of a lot of stuff here. Or, you know. Can I set my pack SNI 35 LOC gains with oscilloscope? Without. Or with, with AO scope. Yeah. I mean, it's an SNI 35, though. I wouldn't waste your time. Got to be honest with you. Not, not going to matter. Just turn them all the way up and call it a day. Um, which Glowforge model is that? The plus. plus. Thank you. Plus, he says. All right. Oh, hey, Morel's in the house. Woo! Hey. Set gains with voltmeter, so it may be off some. If I turn the attenuation up on Twitter, will I probably blow it? Speaker not loud enough. KS six by nines. I mean, it, okay. So if okay, to set voltmeter gain, you still can use a negative five dB track. Okay, so if you played a track that's 40 hertz at negative 5 dB, because I would never go any higher than negative 5 dB at highs. Um, I'm sorry, not 40 hertz, but 1,000 hertz. So if you use the 1,000 hertz at negative 4 dB, and you use the digital multimeter and set the math up accordingly, you're getting everything there is out of that amplifier. That's it. That's all there is. That's, that's the most amount of power you're going to get out of that amplifier, even if you put an O-scope on it, even if you did anything, because you're 5 dBs above on clip signal so it's clipping already if you're going negative five it's clipping the only thing is you're playing music and you're hoping that because the music fluctuates it's never going to go crazy now if you're just listening to modern music uh this current top 40 crap that's just all sine wave music yeah chances are good you're probably gonna blow the tweeters but if it's not loud enough it's not a question of should i turn the gain up more it's a question of how much power do i actually have and how efficient is the speaker and, and whatnot. It might, believe it or not, you just might not have enough sound for what you want. It happens. What's up, fellas? What's up? Uh, Hertz SPL shows six by nines and an 06 RAM. Too big? Uh, if you get the Neos, no, you should be fine. You just gotta get the Neos. It's a magnet that's the problem on those. Awesome, thanks. Okay. Uh, you mean negative 5 dB is actually a positive 5 dB? Yeah, I know. Hoo-hoo, boggles the mind, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, it is. We did a cool video on that. So uh, do is positive, positive is negative? Yeah, I know, it's so confusing. Uh, do bad RCA cables cause channels to lose volume on either left or right? Bad RCAs can do a lot of things to sound and... You know, if you have a, if yes, the answer to the question is yes, bad RCAs could cause that. Why is really the problem? Now, you can test your RCAs if you have a digital multimeter with continuity. Uh, you can literally take the RCA, take your continuity meter, set the one that goes beep, and put it on the ground shield and, sh you know, shake the cable and see if you have, you know, continuity there. If it, if it fluctuates or goes beep, 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 then yeah, you have a broken ground shield. Uh, and you can do the same thing to the center pin and see if it is okay. Um, shake it a little bit. Uh, okay, so PAC makes a tool that also does that, which is funny because I, I never use it for that, but that is the one thing that it does and that I have used it for, which is this guy right here. It's like 35 bucks. You can get it on Amazon. I think Metro makes the same thing in the install bay, but this guy here, this is a... Uh, it, it's just a resist uh, uh, continuity tester, um, which is really cool because if you don't have a digital multimeter, you can actually make ends for this and make it a continuity, a continuity tester. And when it plugs in, if everything is good, the light comes on. And if everything is bad, it didn't work out. So 
this tool here has that feature. Um, and of course the model number is the TLP. It's just a tone generator. I think if you look up tone generator on Amazon, which you could find, I think we have, I know we have links to this on DNF tool drawer. So you can go to DNF tool drawer and uh, figure that one out. Um, but yeah, there you go. Lots of fun. Hey, listen guys, I'd love to stay here and keep answering questions. And hey, you know what? In yeah. an hour or 45 minutes from now, We'll be on Facebook answering more of your questions. So that's Car Stereo Talk coming to you at 6.30. Make sure you head over there, and uh, we'll answer some more questions for you. Otherwise, you guys have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you tonight and or tomorrow. Say goodbye, Fernando. Goodbye, Fernando. Bye. No picture, please. No, pictures. no, no pictures? No, not right now. No pictures. What are we doing? Try to. Dude, it's not a bomb. Oh, it's not? Oh, never mind. No, you, you're, you're okay, <laughs> man. You're okay. It's all right. It's a bomb. It's not a bomb. It's a bomb, but not a bomb. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. What's up? Afternoon. How's everybody doing? Hey, hey, hey. What's going on? What's going on? The usual fun and excitement. Yeah. Still working on the Jeep? Still working on the Jeep. Yeah. But we're really close. Actually, we're about, eh, I don't know, half hour. Yeah, we got we to gotta tune it, bro. All right. All right, hold on. Can we all agree that when we say we're going to tune a system, that does not mean just setting the gains? Okay. Oh, okay, is that we, what it means? Can we all agree that, that's, that really? tuning a system is not just setting gains? Can you tune my amplifier? No, I can set your gains and your crossover, but that's, that's about as far as it goes. So it's all... Let's just all go with that. I saw a picture like this. Somebody put a picture doing something like this with an amplifier. Oh. Let me tune, let me tune your amplifier. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, to answer your question about the pack, uh, LOC cause clipping on a mono amplifier. Yeah, of course. If the signal coming into the LOC is clipped, then it's going to pass that along. So yes it'll it's it's so let's say you have a radio and that it plays let's say it goes up to 50 for easy math but at 47 anything past 47 is distortion or clipping you put a loc in there let's say anything past 47 is still going in that loc that's clipped you're gonna boom all the way through now the other thing that you can run into is that Let's say you have a clean output all the way through, meaning all the way up to 50, it's clean all the way. And you put an LOC in there that doesn't have the capability of handling the amount of power that you're passing through it. Therefore, yes, now you're going to clip the LOC because it can't handle the amount of voltage you're passing through it. So there's, there's a lot of things that can go wrong when using a high level to low level. That's why we always recommend use the best high level to low level you can. And hey, if you want the best, in our opinion, the sponsor of the show, Audio Control, then make it LC1i. LC1i. I got it right that time. Yeah. LC1i is a phenomenal high level to low level adapter as well as a line driver. So it's multi-use and it's pretty affordable and it's badass. It is. Uh, set gains, crossovers, time delay, level control, and EQ. That would be... Tuning. tuning. Yeah. Setting your gains is not tuning. Uh, but do you have real fill, bro? <laughs> what do you not think? Uh, what, yeah. Uh, good afternoon from the Great White North. Ooh. Ontario. Canada. Uh, can I daisy chain amps from match amp to audio control? I will use the match amp for the DSP. Any output will go into any input. So on a match amp, it has a single RC output. You can go out of that single RC output into any amplifier you want. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So yes, the answer to the question is correct. Uh, how do I combat that to stop clipping? So to solve the issue, first off, you have to find out where the radio is clipping and then know not to go past that and or if the radio doesn't clip, find out how much voltage you have out coming out that's going through the high level to low level adapter and then get a better high level to low level adapter or turn you can turn the if it yeah the gains aren't really anything on high level to low level adapter kind of a joke need a tutorial on setting gains with multimeter 
from you, not any other chump on YouTube, please. I think we did that. Didn't we do that in the um, fundamentals. fundamentals? I think we did that in the fundamentals. If you go over to Dean and Fernando's Car Stereo Clip, check out Fundamentals. It's a playlist. Uh, it's a show that we do every other, every couple times on Monday night's show. Um, and there should be setting gains with digital multimeter there. Um, we need more gain on amp. Need that on a t-shirt. Gary from Sound Effects. What's up? All right, let's, let's take a look and see what we got going on on this before we get too deep into questions. So we're working on this Jeep Grand Cherokee. Customer is... All about that base, no treble. That's all about that base, no treble. Fernando's finishing up, getting the base knobs done. Uh, amplifier is in. So we have the Sundown Salt 4. Uh, well, okay, one of the cool things I like about this amplifier and equally hate about this amplifier is that, like, you'll notice it says Sundown Salt 4. So if I put it this way, it's cool. But now this one is upside down because if I, you know, so I could have power and ground on either side. So that's a really cool feature, but also an equally annoying feature. I wish it was just a badge in the center that I could just flip, kind of like what Kicker used to do. And I'm sure there's other people that have done it as well. Um, so what you're looking at, that wire is, is going like this. So um, that's why from this angle it looks weird. It's actually a floating wire. So uh, battery's in place and a lot of that battery goes down into the floor. Uh, the bolt is now, that's the, that's the spare tire bolt, so that's what's holding this all in. Uh, we have our switching relay, our fuse distribution, our epicenter. Uh, this is all our piece of plastic that we made. Got it in one, which is really nice. We have our 8-gauge uh, power and ground for our speakers, two of them. We have the Sundowns in the Gately audio box. I'll look, dude, look at these things. Like, I know you guys love this. Look at that. How ridiculous. I mean... Yeah, I have short fingers, but I mean, you get the idea. That's like, it's ridiculous. All right, here you go. I got some. There's a sock. There's a 10. There's your 10, guys. Look at that. That is just silly. But it's a gately. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. So those are heavy. Um, one other thing we did is you'll notice all these little screws here. So this is the stopper for the box. It's a one inch one inch by one and a quarter inch the box will just you know s slide in goes over that fold the seats back it locks the box into place but if you need to get it out and service it all you have to do is fold the seats back forward you can even just push the box forward if you wanted to lift this up and take a look at them because uh, once they go in it's really heavy so i'm waiting for him to finish with those so that we can do uh the dd1 in here set the gains and be done with it so the plan is it's got to be done tonight before we leave and then he can pick it up in the morning because uh, we have a ton of crap to do tomorrow naturally so yay uh miss dean is here probably not some number uh -huh. units moved um what is your favorite underseat powered subwoofer underseat power subwoofer Oh, gosh, I don't know if the kicker one's pretty nice. Uh, believe it or not, that Alpine with the little DSP amplifier that we reviewed wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. Um, the one we did the other day sucked. That was the JBL. All right. Hola, amigos, it's Gary from Sound Effects. You said that, I know. Sorry, I'm behind. I would, I would probably pick the 8 power sub. Well, kicker has the 10 now. We actually have one that we need to try out. No, I'm talking about Rockford. Oh yeah, but that won't fit under my small seats. Ah, I know, but I mean that's I'll not that's that. not even fair. Are the Alpine X Type six by nines as good as high end speakers? They're very nice. The X Type is a very nice, and I will tell you this: um, if you're an Alpine fan and you're thinking about getting them, get them now. Get them now. Because get them. Probably find it. You know, get them now. Okay. You know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So, hurry up. Uh, will we get to see them bump? Um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, probably. Maybe tomorrow morning we'll do a really... We'll come on real quick just so you guys can see them move. Um, tonight we won't because uh, it's it's. I need this phone in order to, to get to the tones and stuff like that. Um, 
Best set of six and a half to six and a half for 500 bucks or less. I suck at prices, guys. I really do. Um, Focal has Focal has the auditor, and then they have the step right above that, which I think is the integration. Those are pretty reasonably priced. I want, you might want to check those out. Um, you could look at like the Hertz Dichies, which is which is not bad, which is good, you know. Uh, tap the sub on the box. I remember everyone doing that in the store back in the days. Well, yeah, you tap it to make sure they're both moving up. Yeah. What did Nando think of Haley's Kenwood install? He hasn't watched it yet. I haven't watched it yet. No, she did stop by today. She was all excited. She goes, you need to hire me. And I'm like, <laughs> why? For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, if you follow us on The Boring Life of Dean and Haley, uh, Haley finally got the new radio for her car. And thank you, Kenwood. And I made her put it in. So we filmed her going through the joys of trying to do this. So it was kind of fun. We had a good time. Dina Fernando, hello from Chicago. My RTA R2 is on the way. Yes, it is. Uh, didn't realize yesterday was a holiday, so everything went out today. If you haven't ordered your IRTA2, what are you waiting for? By all means, head over there, order one up. We'll get it, you know, we'll get it to you. And make your life a lot easier being able to see what it is. You can actually see the sound coming over the wires. It's, it's a fabulous thing. And if you don't know what we're talking about, head over to DNF Tool Drawer and watch some of the videos that are there. And they'll uh, help you out. What is your favorite tool in the shop? Uh, my, R, my IRTA2. Actually, really, no. Um, my favorite tool has always been the RTAs because it. it you gotta understand, man. For years, years, like the shop I worked for could not afford an RTA that would actually do that. And it's funny, I actually still have this right here so this is the shop i worked for's rta we had this back in the 90s and it was just for sound it doesn't work anymore i mean it probably would work if i got it serviced the power supply on it blew up um but it wasn't an electrical rta it was just an acoustical rta and i keep it for nostalgic because it's pretty neat um either way we weren't able to do what we can do now so when i got my first PA3, this guy right here, oh, sorry. When I got this, it was like, it opened up a whole new world of installation capabilities and just being able to see um, what the hell was going on in a car, you know, find out, is this is this the sub wire? Is this the tweeter wire? Um, but, you know, even buying this back then, it was like $680. So that was that was a kick in the, kick in the guts for sure. Um, but you know, then I became addicted to them. So I actually have two. Fernando has one. There's the X. Uh, this is, this is the PAA two, which most people don't even know exists. This was the first one. I found this on eBay. I got super excited. Of course, had to buy it. it still works. Um, another, uh, and NTI. And then of course the DMRTA. Um, but you know, being able to see what the hell you're doing. Most shops don't have a, most shops don't, you know, and it's sad. But so that was the whole when I when I found out about th this little box that could possibly do that immediately, I was like, oh, I want to develop this. And so, you know, two years and a bunch of money later and now we can pass it along to you guys. So it's pretty neat. But anyways, you yeah, can get it right now. It's available. And that's been story time with Dean. Moving on. Uh, will you install the Macintosh app into a customer's car or will you not due to liability? I mean, I wouldn't install a Macintosh amp in a car unless it's been totally serviced and, you know, passed over by them. Because at this point, they weren't that great and reliable to begin with. Now, 20 years later, um, especially the first gens, like the second generation stuff like Doug has in his car, um, if it's been serviced, it's fine. But like the one I have, that, the, that one there, that's got a bad channel on it, so I'd have to send it off to get it serviced. Um, it's up to you, man. I mean, it, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know why not. Sorry, Haley will be too busy to install radios. Yeah, no doubt, right? Uh, which on you the most? What do you mean, Arturo? 
I hear the Alpine Type R and X might be getting discontinued. Any truth to that? I can tell you right now, the Type R is not being discontinued. Okay, the Type R is not getting discontinued. As a matter of fact, the Type R is still not getting discontinued. And there is some cool stuff coming out. Um, what placement do you use for the DMRTA mic? Uh, we put it right here. It just comes out of the center of the seat. We have a, okay, so hold on. Ah. All right. So even though we have the DMRTA Pro, which is right there, which is, I think, backup number three, in case all things go wrong, this is our RTA shit box as i like to call it and inside of this is all our cables for the different usb ends our microphone cables our microphones the 90 degree adapter that's still plugged into the microphone um we did have a microphone blow up the other day which is kind of weird so this one this one went bad it's like four years old and went bad or three years old so got to get a replacement for that but oh jesus this is the mic stand here that we use. And what we do is it goes through the headrest like this, and then this will bend down, and the microphone will just go like right there, but in the center. So that's what we use for that. And this will go. Um, I will say this, which I, I should put these up on DNF tool drawer. If you are having to do um, where you need a longer cable, this is like the best way to do it. This is a US, uh, USB 2.0 active extender. So this is an amplified uh, cable extender, which uh, Ken Ward, of course, was the first one to share that. And anything Ken Ward shares, you immediately just go out and buy because it's what you're going to want. Um, but that's a really cool thing to have. Uh, Haley doing deck swaps for shop. <laughs> Did I miss something? No, nah, we, we put a... We, she got her new radio put in over on uh, the Boring Life of Dean and Haley YouTube show that we do. Uh, we filmed it, and she kind of walked us through it. So it is hilarious. Uh, every shop should minimally buy an RTA, too. Yes, an IRTA. Too. I would agree with that, and I have no problem. I'm more than welcome to sell one to everybody. When will Audio Control drop Micro Epicenter? It's out for pre-order right now, and I think we're a week away from where you might start seeing it in retail establishments. Hey, guys. What's up, Johnny? Sorry about Dallas, bro. What happened to Dallas? They didn't win. The football team. Oh, I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, that's what I'd be talking about. You know me. I'm all big up into the football stuff. Yeah. Alpine Type Talks, will they fit in a 2020 Civic? Do you think the... Do you think the X-Types would fit in a Civic without modifying the door? Hang on. I'm hanging. Fernando said, hang on. You got time for that. All right, say that again. Do you think that the Type X speakers will fit in a Honda without cutting the door? Honda Core? Yeah, they're all the same. Honda Civic Core, they all have the stupid little things. Yeah, I think so. You just have to kind of put the speaker. You think it'll fit? Up. Yeah. Really? I mean, they have the Neo Magnets, I get that. Do those have yeah. Neo Magnets? The X type? Yeah. yeah, I know the R types fit fine. Yeah. Um, Fernando, yeah, Fernando the, thinks uh, they might fit. Definitely use the brackets. Yeah, you got to use the brackets, but yeah. Uh, got my big ass GZ four inch mids going into the Dodge Nitro. How should I aim for image? Uh, I'll be using the DM six hundred eight and the Alpine F four hundred nine. Man. Honestly, I'm not the guy to ask about that. I don't do A-pillars, um, so I really don't know. I know Andy over at Audio Frog. I think he's got a white paper on his thoughts on the matter. Um, but, yeah, honestly, I don't have an answer. Have you played around with Foreskin on your Mustang? Nope. No. Never do that. And I <laughs> never will. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Nope. I'm not that guy. I'm not that curious. Uh, it starts when I put the key in, and I'm pretty happy. And actually, you put I don't. Gas even, on it? I put gas in it, uh, and I push the button to start. 
Stupid autocorrect. Stupid autocorrect. What RTA do you use most frequently? Um. <laughs> okay, so. All right, good question, Arturo. All right, hold on. Let me open this drawer. Give me one sec. All right, so. This one, I the minimalize the minimalizer I like because when you do this, it turns on really fast, and I can start using the RTA. But if you'll notice, there's no numbers. There's no numbers for frequency. So if I if I have to like test something, like if, if I'm looking to see like like a signal, like just a test signal for like ANC or you know, if I just need a quick look and I don't need to know the numbers, I buy, I grab this one because it powers up so fast. Um, but if I need to know what is actually happening, get this, this has a double on and off switch, then I'll grab this one. This one takes a little bit longer to power up. Um, the other thing too that's nice about this one is it's real easy to change the range. So that I like about this. You can also change the range really fast on the X. So this one, as you notice, it has the numbers across the bottom. So this one we'll use if we actually want to see the number, like what frequency we're having or what's going on, we'll use this one. It takes a little bit longer, um, but uh, you know, this is the go-to for that kind of thing. And then of course you turn it off and it does that whole thing or you just flip it over and you flick that. Now for all around functionality, the, the X is definitely the way to go. The problem is with the X, it has an internal battery, so you have to make sure it's charged. And then the other problem with the X is if it's if this is charged, which is probably not because the battery sucks. Um, and we don't use it all that often. Yeah, the battery's dead on it. But uh, this takes like no shit 30 seconds to power up, 30 seconds to a minute to power up, which drives my impatient ass absolutely crazy. So, um, yeah, those are the two we, we play with the most. Now, when we're tuning a car, it's just the, the, the DMRTA, which there again, this all of these are trumped by this because this will do all of it. The only problem is, is that it, you need an external screen, which you can do the Bluetooth into the iPad uh, or the Android tablet if you want, if you're just doing some quick testing. But if you're doing like, I need to tune a car, that is the one we would use. Uh, in the past, now we just use the IRTA2 because most of the time we're looking at two channels instead of just one. So it's kind of nice. Uh, back to work. See you guys. Totally understand, which is kind of where we need to be. Let me just scroll down, down here at the bottom. Uh, nice, Johnny. On new truck, I've done a nice few changes. I just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the guy that likes to screw with stuff. I know that seems weird considering what we do, but on my own stuff, I'm like really, put it this way. I've had it, I don't know how long now, almost a year, and I haven't even got an oil change yet. It's only got like 3,400 miles on it. So, yeah. All right, with that, what's the pack? Audio number to mount six and a half mids. And honestly, I have no idea what the part number is. But if you go to pack com and type in the F-150, you can find out. Or metroonline.com, and they have them too. But either way, Fernando, you ready? I'm ready. Base Let's knobs, go. all that stuff's in? Base all right, we got to go. We got to do some tuning. <laughs> no, we're going to set some games. All right, guys, you have a great, wonderful night. We'll see you tomorrow morning. We'll let you guys hear this thing bumping. Hang on before you guys go. On Monday. We'll tell them that tomorrow. Well, There's no to show. Play. Monday's not going to be a show. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll talk about it more tomorrow. All right, guys. Bye. We'll see you. Good morning, guys. It is early for a lot of you. I have no idea what time it is. I don't have my watch on. But we told you guys we would come out in the morning and let you guys hear the Jeep with the sundown and the salt four. And I, you know, try to keep my promise. I need a haircut. I'll do that next. Fernando is right here. We're in the parking lot. How you doing, Fernando? Oh, wonderful, man. Just checking the system, checking the system over here. Pop, pop the back for me, please, sir. What's up, Morel? All right. So for those of you that, that didn't see it, he's got the Gately box. 
Haley saw the box the other day. She's like, dude, this looks so nice. Who built this? And I'm like, Haley. She goes, I want one. And I was like, hey, yeah, yeah, you do. Uh, but we have the big guys here. Let's do a quick flex and then we'll hop inside and hear it. All right, so there's a quick flex. Big ass port. <clears throat> Nah, I mean, we're, we're, we wanted to show you guys this. We'll come back later today and do more talking. Uh, so there's all his boxes and whatnot. And I'm pretty sure he's gonna break this car, but go ahead, <laughs> Fernando. Turn it down for a second. Now we added sound treatment all through here, all up and through here all up underneath where the spare tire was. This, we, we used a whole 36 square feet back here, all through here. So Fernando spent a day and a half putting tons of sound treatment on this. So it doesn't vibrate much. I know it's, it's. What's wrong, man? Your nose itching? Yeah, I got boogers. You got boogers? It's knocking all the boogers out of your brain? No. <laughs> yeah, the phone is hard to do it justice. There's no question about it. But, we, you know, I I feel at this point everyone knows how bad the phone sounds. Oh, yeah. I mean, you no, know, it's just to you guys see yeah. the flex and everything. But. So we got our voltage, we got our clip light, and then what we did is we put our epicenter ended up going right here so that that way if it's off and he has his clothes, not, you know, no one's going to be like playing with it or whatnot, but if he wants to play with it. But let's let's see, do we have a, a song with no bass? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have. Probably in the sound cue file. Oh, that's got way too much bass. Oh, yeah. Turn the epicenter down. Right there. Alright, so that's that's no epicenter at all. That's just regular boomity boom. That's epicenter coming. No epicenter. If you have plans to build an SPL vehicle, my recommendation don't get the sunroof. <clears throat> I mean, it's it's too late now, but epicenter in a nutshell. Exactly, epicenters are the best nutshell. if you're trying to go. No nutshell. Oh, that means all in court, all mm -hmm. encapsulated. Come on, guys, gotta you know. He doesn't always know these things. I have no idea. But it's nice when you put them out there because then I get to explain it to him. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what if you open the sunroof? How much base uh, you lose? Actually, I don't think you're gonna lose any base per se. I, I think you're gonna increase the air in the in the car, which should make it louder. Because anytime you can, you know, just like when you roll with your windows down. So, in essence, he could probably leave the windows up, open the sunroof, and have that same, you know, lots of air movement. Uh, epicenter is worth it in your mind. I mean, did you hear that? I mean, yeah. Okay, here, all right. If you listen to a lot, like I listen to a lot of 80s and 90s rock music that really didn't have great bass. So that epicenter creates all that bass for me. Cause I like bass, that's why I got into this. And so, yeah, it's totally worth it. Now, not every, if all you listen to is modern day music, then you're probably okay. You're probably gonna be fine. Yeah. The light, the light is like, I'm getting this strange hue on my face because the phone is trying to screw with the white balance. Yeah, it's very much. Nice. Uh, go to the SQ tracks. The SQ test yeah. tracks? Yeah, and then just pick one. My guess is nothing on me. Sure, whatever you like. So that we can play longer tracks, we downloaded a bunch of. So that actually has a good base. Yeah.
the epicenter up, the car is falling apart. Uh, awesome. Uh, what is my thoughts on the salt amplifiers? Um, I, I don't, I don't know if I have like a, what I would call like a review, like, oh my gosh, these things are so great. A uh, couple things I, I can note about the amplifiers, which I think is the best that I can really do, because we've only installed one, so I don't think you can install one and do anything more than give your impressions on it. Uh, it's heavy as hell, so there's no question about that. Uh, I do like and don't like equally. Uh, okay, not equally. I like that the logos on it are top and bottom, so no matter which way you put it, there's always a logo facing up. That also kind of irritates me because there's always one that is facing down. Uh, I, I, just, I don't know why people just don't put plaques in the middle on Allen keys that you can just flip. I think that would make life so much better in most cases, but for some reason, they can't figure out the that stuff we more could expensive. do back in the 80s. Um, it's, I, I like, and there's a lot of things I like and dislike about it. So for example, like, I like the amount of information that the base knob gives you. Like, I think it, it's pretty cool. However, I, I, I kind of wish they would have engineered it in a way that you could mount it better. Like, this is fine, but it would have been neat if it was like multi, and there again, this all adds to the price of the amplifier. So when you're trying to hit a budget, you kind of have to settle. But I know there's a lot of manufacturers that are using this style sub control. I just wish that like you could break it into pieces and or make it so it's flush mountable, which it's not, which that kind of irritates me. But I like the fact that you have this much info from the amplifier up front. I, I think this is something that the SPL world has that the aftermarket doesn't. And it, it's one of those things where it, it would be kind of a cool option. So um, I like the fact that the, the speaker terminal outputs, like there's four, even though it's a mono amplifier, I think that's a great feature, especially for something like this, it's a 4,000 watt amp. And it has like, we ran eight gauge out of it and through the subs, the subs are all wired up in eight gauge. and. I, I think you probably could have fit a four gauge, which is really nice. So I like that they thought about that in the sense that like, yeah, we gotta make sure we have big enough wire terminals and there's four instead of just two, which in my mind is dumb. Uh, what kind of sucked about them, uh, which is something that like audio control, so they're not alone in this, is which audio control is actually switching going forward, is that they're screw down uh, they're Phillips screws instead of Allen screws on the side of the amplifier. I think that's a bad idea because it's really, as we all know, it's really hard to get in there with a Phillips screwdriver with four points and, and get that super tight like we want to make sure we get it. So there, there's, there's some likes and dislikes, I get that, but I think that's kind of what we would do. Um, the controls on the side of the amplifier, it's got everything you could possibly think of. It's got a subsonic, it's got uh, good low pass, it's got a bass boost, it's got, you know, gain control. Um, I think it has one other. Um, but there's there's a lot of controls on the side of the amplifier, so you have good ability to, once you get it in, set those things and get the appropriate sound that you're looking for. Uh, the clip indicator, it, it, both up front and at the amplifier, makes setting it up so easy. You know, yesterday we were talking about bringing out the DD-1, and we brought it out, and then we're like, oh, we don't need this, because it has a clip indicator on it. And Fernando's like, big report connection. All right, sorry about that. Uh, it was clipping, and I was like, and then I looked at the side of the amp, and yeah, sure enough, when we were working the DD1, it was clipping at the same time. So we know that the clip indicator in it is functioning at least as well as the DD1 would expect it to. Uh, there wasn't any in the box, but okay, cool. I mean, I hope so. Maybe that's something they changed. Uh, maybe you got an early one, I don't know. There again, I'm just reporting what, what we did. I mean, you know, this is probably the only one we install. So I'm, I'm not, like if it's the amp for you, I mean, it's a big ass amplifier, it's 4,000 watts, it's a beast. So, all right, let's do it one more time. Let's go back to the, uh, let's go back to the, yeah, that's a good track, I mean, that was hammered. We can work the, uh, we'll play it one more time just to let you guys experience the morningness. Right, hang on a second, flip this around.
that's the back. That's not the sunroof. <laughs> this uh -huh. is the sunroof. Uh, Excuse see. the whole thing. Let's see what happens. All right, hang on a second. Now you want to open the sunroof? Yeah, yeah. All right, sunroof is open. A little bit more. All right, so the sunroof is now open all the way. Let's see what happens. Press play. seem louder seems like it, I don't know feels like it's moving more air that's just moving a lot of air but there you go the sunroof is open you guys have a great rest of your day we'll try to come on later and talk to you some more love doing the diff you, you find I think you find the hardest way to do everything yes yes that's my last name difficult difficulto difficulto <laughs> I was gonna say um should we should put the uh we should put the the fabric back you know the cloth that was there mm -hmm. we should put that back and tuck it to cover up those noisy um these things that are gonna make a, sh a ton of noise so yeah, that. So let's let's make sure we put the cotton back. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Uh, it's a little late in the day. I apologize. It's just been very hectic here since this morning with the news. We've been running around, just Being doing our blind. thing. Yeah. So just just kind of like fold it over and tuck it. And tuck it. Yes. Yeah, smack tuck it up. It. Flip it. Rub it down. Oh. Tuck it. Yeah. Tuck it. Pull it. Spin it. Bop it. Bop it. Uh, we have a Toyota Tacoma. Oh, nice. I know, I got it right. Wow. I, it took me a minute. I had to, I had to go slow. Busy BD, Friday is good. Uh, it, yeah, if you say so. I don't know. It's been a busy, busy week. Slow Friday would have been wonderful. Um, all right, so what we got going on in this, uh, there is an audio control D51300 going up underneath the seat right here. I just got it in and ran the wires to where they needed to go. Fernando is finishing up the box install. I think we should, I, I don't think we need to pull it forward. I think we no, should no, just no. roll it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it just goes, like that. Perfect. Yep, perfect. Uh, two comp RTs, Rhino lined. Which box is this? This is the uh, key. This uh, is a Q power? No. Q bomb? No. Q? It's something. I don't even remember. Anyways. Uh, built for this truck, whatever, it's all there, you know, uh, getting that in, he wanted lots of bass, so 51300, uh, it's going to be powered off the factory radio, which is, is chilling out right here, we have our input output wires, now one of you guys, you guys always ask about T harnesses, and the cool thing about the new Toyotas, these are the speaker wires here, it, they're all by themselves and it's really cool, come here, could you give me a hand for a second? You want a hand? Just one hand. Could you could you find the bag of Metra in here somewhere? It's, it's I don't know where the heck it went, but it's got to be around. It's got to be in there. It would be on top because I literally just opened it. Ah, that's it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Ah. All right. So if you're gonna if you have a Toyota, if you have a new Toyota, and you're gonna be putting a radio in it, you're gonna do high level to low level. These are the speaker harnesses now. So they're all by themselves, which is wonderful. Dude, I've only made it back to Haines City. Ah, oh, that's all right. 70-1765 um, and the 71-1765. If you buy these two harnesses, you'll get these two, amongst other things, you'll get these two in the bag. And this will allow you to make a speaker harness for the newer Toyotas if you're gonna be doing high level, to low level interfacing. So this this is your this is your pro move for the day. These still need to go in, obviously, because they're here, duh. 
But yeah, this is how you're going to interface into, this is a 2018? 2021. 2021. Okay, so this is a new one, but I think it goes back some. So there you go. This is cool. This is great. I mean, Toyotas have always been pretty easy to do. Like there's everything made for a Toyota. So kudos to Toyota for making it all right. Uh, that This is non-JBL, correct. This is for non-JBL. If it's a JBL, then there are other harnesses that do it. So this is non-JBL Toyota. Uh, and this works for pretty much the whole Toyota line, you know, 19 up. So should be dealing with aluminum wires. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's funny you should say that. And I will show you guys the aluminum wires because they are here and Toyota makes them easy to spot. It is purple. So if you see these purple wires, those are going to be your aluminum wires. So you really don't want to cut these. Just if you see a purple wire with a stripe, leave them alone. Um, try to find the interface to plug into them because they make them all. Don't, don't deal with those. Don't cut, don't butt, don't do anything. You don't want electrolysis. You don't want any of that fun stuff. Just just try to use the harnesses and or run new wires because um, it's that you don't you just trust me don't play with those just let them do their thing it's a speaker wire it's fine it'll do what it needs to do let's take a look underneath the hood i'm not gonna you know back toy it up on this one but fernando made his mount here it's attached to the back to the factory bolt so to get the battery out you just unclick this when you're pulling your two bolts off to get to the battery do your service, put your battery brace back on, put the second bolt, so there's two bolts here, one upper, one lower, and you have your battery support in. I don't know what this is, this is fact, this is not, this is something he put in, so that's not us. Ours is the, the pretty one. Pretty sexy one, right, Fernando? That is correct. That is correct. Uh, as far as speakers, he actually did the speakers on his own. He did some Focal inside, so the plug-in plays. So we have uh, the six by nine component up front here and the six and a half coaxials in the back here. Here's what this box looks like in place. So nice, I know, fun, exciting. Uh, if you do have a, a Tacoma like this, when you're doing the seats, he has these cool neoprenes. Make sure you remove that back plastic cover. Uh, whatever side you're doing, like in, in a lot of cases, we're just putting a sub on the passenger side, like the comp, the comp L7T box fits really nice. Uh, we'll put that in or we'll put the comp, comp RT 112 box as a passive radiator. Either way, take that plastic off so that, that you're not smacking into that hard plastic, which totally sucks. Uh, it's just, it's real simple. Once you get this apart, you, know, you gotta pop these things off to get this out of the car. And then there's three screws, one here, one here, one here. And the whole thing slides down. Put the screws back in place so you know where they're at. Set the other things somewhere else. Throw them in your attic. Put them underneath your bed. Do whatever you want with them and save them for later. The cool thing is if you're just doing a sub on this side, you only have to remove this one so you can still fold down that seat, put crap on it, do whatever you need to. If you're going to do like the taco tunes, one sub on this side, then still take that off and then leave this one so you have crap. He's doing a double sub box so he gets no, no bummer thing there. Uh, I'm jealous. I wish someone made an enclosure for my 21 Ranger crew cab, right? No doubt. Dude, there is no room in that car. Like Ford did not think of base when they made that. It's almost like they went back in time and said, Hey, remember when we made that really crappy Ford Ranger that there was no room in? Let's do that again. It's a single. The Ranger? That's the one that has like the, the seats that fold down. We did one like two or three weeks ago and like we ended up just sticking it behind the seat. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Um, what is a good option for behind the seat sub in a 2016 F-150? Nothing crazy, you just want a little extra race. Honestly, we never put anything behind the seats in the little F-150. It always goes underneath the seats. So um, I think JL makes a stealth box for behind the seats. And though it's nothing crazy, it's a jail stealth box. So that's all I got to say about that. But no, we never put anything behind the seats. We always go with something convenient underneath the seat. Like, uh, you know, Rockford makes their P300 amplified. They make a little eight inch, which is really small. It's got a 300 watt amp in it. It's really nice. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of room. You can make an umbilical cord so you can move it anywhere you want underneath that seat. You can stand it up. So as far as a little base, as you say, it is physically small. It's easy to work with. 
and you still keep pretty much all that area underneath there and you still have a good utilitarian you know you can do what you want with it lgds do i need for 2021 chevy traverse yes you need the green the green actually fernando lift up that seat for me for a second of course oh you gotta yeah you gotta, yeah, you gotta okay push it, push it. so if you'll notice under here there's your D5 1300 and there's your LGD greens. Uh, that seems to be what is working on most new newer vehicles is the greens, not the blues. Uh, so we just graduated. That's I just grabbed those now from the beginning instead of having to deal with it. Uh, it, it works better. But yes, in the traverse, you definitely need the greens. So. Oh, what was that one? Uh, what would you recommend to integrate into 2019 Jim C. Arcadia Nambo's system? Uh, there again, you're gonna want the LGD greens. Um, or, you know, when, when you say integrate into a system, that, that opens a can and for a lot of, okay, what should I buy? Should I buy a DSP? Yes, you should buy, everyone should buy a DSP. Uh, DSP is definitely the way to go. However, uh, which reminds me of why Fernando made this, there's three courses of actions to integrate into a factory stereo when there isn't a Amp Pro or a Zen module or an AR available to it. And basically how that's gonna integrate is first up, you have your high level to low level adapter. Now this display is obviously sponsored by Audio Control, so we are gonna use them to talk about this. Uh, this is your LC7i. This is your standard high level. So you have your inputs here, where are your speaker wires are gonna go in electrically, reduces the signal to a low level signal, um, keeping it as clean as humanly possible, but you're still, you know, if you have dirty in, you're still gonna have dirty out. It's just not gonna make it dirtier. So remember that. Uh, next up from that is gonna be something that is a high level to low level with some form of equalization. So this is the LCQ1, one of my personal favorites. They have the LCQ1, they have the DQ61. Uh, and this gives you an analog equalizer built on top of an LC7i. So integration wise, this allows you to at least modify the existing tune that's on the car. So the new speakers you have come in, you can change them so they sound better than factory. And then moving on from there, of course, is gonna be your DSP option, which is still gonna have your high level input, but now you have a full suite of tools to attack that signal and make it sound amazing. That's, that's all I got on that one. Um, would you recommend getting signal LC2i from rear speakers or front? And what gauge wire would you recommend for power for an LC2i? LC2i is only gonna need um, 18 gauge or 22 gauge. It's just small wire, it only draws like three, three amps of current. It's nothing too exciting. Um, one of the reasons we started developing the, the IRTA2 that we sell now is so that they're, they're again, not used specifically, but so that people can test and physically see the signal, the electrical signal that is coming back to those speakers. If you go to DNF tool drawer and you go to the IRTA, IRTA2 page, you'll see that we have comparing front speaker to rear speaker, which one should I tap? And we did that specifically so that we could show that like in most vehicles, the front speaker has more bass than the rear speakers. And you can visually see that with an electrical RTA. You're not gonna go out and buy that, I understand. What if you did, but thank you. Um, but the front speaker, nine times out of 10 is gonna be the speaker you want, not the rear speaker. Because the rear speaker will usually have some kind of crossover on it and limit its performance. It could be ever so slight, but it's usually there. Um, so there, there again, you know, way to go. Uh, also, you gotta remember they make the LC2i, they make the LC2i Pro, which comes with the base knob, and then they make the LC1i now. So that's also, a, a, and that's a good bargain, uh, good value. Uh, thanks for all your help, DNF, thank you. LCQ1 is like 20 years old per you. It's old, man, but it still works and gets the job done. IRTA2, yes. Christian, drive, man. Drive. Don't type. Drive. Uh, hey, guys. How are you doing today? Uh, sick on the couch in Arizona. Oh, man. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, green Chili 58. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, that sucks. Um, we are not 
I mean, don't get me wrong. I really would like to take a nap on a couch. But everything's going good. I mean, you know. I mean, we're healthy. It's right now, this moment. Which I guess is all you can hope for, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's your Kenny Rogers. Some of you get that. The rest of you won't. Uh, what do the base blockers on your site for tweeters, mids, and highs help with alternator one? No, they're base blockers. It's a high-pass crossover. So more than likely, it's like a 3.3 microfarad filter uh, for tweeters because not all tweeters come with a passive crossover or something like that. So um, those little guys there look something like this, and all they're doing is if your tweeter that you have doesn't have something like this and you're not doing active from something like this there has to be some form of a crossover mind you they they, they range in size some of the some of the crossovers have little tiny 2.2 caps on them which are just as good but you know people were always asking us hey what what's this and what's that so we put them on there so that people uh you know they, they can easily just click on that and buy a tweeter crossover so if you have alternator wine that's a whole nother headache so that's those aren't going to help that <sighs> backed up at disney slow always dude uh is there a harness for the new lg factory radio 2020 traverse um technically yes but it's not what you're thinking um Metra, which this is my name, they make a, an extension cable for their DSP, which has the male and female ends for it on there. I don't know if it's even been seen in the wild yet, but that's that's kind of the only thing I've ever seen that's that's there. So like if you go to Metra's website, uh, I have it on my laptop, I don't have it out now, but if you go to Metra's website and like type in DSP T-Harness GM, you might be able to find it. It's okay, man. It's okay. Auto type is wonderful. Is Dynam is Dynamat? Is it good to eliminate vibrations in my car door? Yeah, any form of sound treatment uh, applied proper if applied properly and in proper amounts will help to reduce the amount of vibration in your door. One thing that you have to keep in mind is what is actually vibrating. So you kind of want to do a little bit of valuation or you just got to kind of grenade the bitch and turn it into a baked potato. But believe it or not, most of your vibration comes from the door card itself, this thing, because you have all these overlapping panels and all this plastic. And if you put a big driver in here and you don't have a fast ring on it or some way to isolate it sound into the door, you're just going to cause vibration in this. So when you're treating sound, we, you know, you have to, when you're, I'm sorry, treating vibration, you have to, you have to treat this too, as well as the inner skin. And of course, you know, the outer skin. So there's three sections to treat in a door panel. So make sure you, you address all of them to eliminate sound properly. You okay over there? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Oh, you're just taking pictures? No. I look what I find. What'd you find? Oh, spider. Oh, and I think I had my head up there. Is it dead? It looks dead. Oh no, it's alive. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, very much I was, alive. <laughs> I was putting my head and uh, you just crawled out. Oh, oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's nice, right? Yeah, that's nice. All right, I'm done over there. Hey. Well, at least it's not a cockroach. Ugh. But yeah, it's funny though. The spider will bite you in I'll virtue. Be, I'm fine. I'm fine with spider. Which is funny, but cockroach, you run like a little bitch. I, uh, I used Killmat Sound Deadener. It was much cheaper, and I still have some left. I did all four doors and trunk. Um, you know, Fernando's not a fan of that particular brand. It is cheaper, but it's also thinner. If you have some left, you might want to look in the areas where you could possibly double up because you can always stack layers of, of sound treatment on top of one another and make things better. So especially on your, your, your card here, um, it's plastic. So the, the more dense and the more thick you can make it concentrating around this area, you can, you can never have too much sound treatment ever. Fernando will tell you that he's, he's, he's a firm believer in I'm going to spend all day putting sound treatment in a car. Oh, vacuum the spider. 
Hit it with the vacuum. Why would you want to do that? Poor spider. Go get the vacuum. Yeah. Um, if you have a small vehicle with only fours in the kicks, would you just run coaxles there or do you feel you need to put a tweeter in the pillar? Uh, I would definitely recommend putting the tweeter in the pillar for sure because you want to expand the sound stage as much as you possibly can. The other thing you may want to do is look at Morel because the Morel makes, I mean, if it's, if it's a big area, like a full kick, because Morel makes the Virtus Carbon Nanos. That is Virtus Carbon Nanos. Or you can just go to morelhifi.com. And the reason why that is, is a lot of the times you have left and right room, but you have no depth. That's why they went with the four inch. The Morel Virtus Carbons are only an inch deep, if, if that. So you may be able to fit those in there. Morel also does make a set of really nice high end four inch coaxial, I'm sorry, components. Mm -hmm that like we put in some of the bigger vans and whatnot that just have the crappy little four inch, they sound fabulous. The other thing too is if you get a radio, like if you're putting a new radio in the dash and you get one that'll do network mode, what's really cool is you can, network mode means tweeter mid sub. So you can use the radio to control all f like four speakers. So it'll do tweeter left and right, out of one and two and three and four would be the mid left and right it might be backwards of that either way it's kind of a cool feature and then you can add in a, um, a sub to it yes victor it's a 2020 toyota tacoma 2020 toyota tacoma yep yep hello from turkey what's up i like, I like turkey it. i like turkey i like turkey yeah me too Turkey. turkey's good yeah. i'm sure you've Turkey's heard that sandwich. joke a million times jesus how lame it's like a bad dad <laughs> that's joke. That's we are. <laughs> it's like a bad dad joke, bro. I know. Um, yeah, that's sad. So sad. Uh, anyways, so this is what we got going on here. Uh, tomorrow is Saturday, which means we will have the Saturday show. How exciting is that? Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Tay just realized that to upgrade sound system speakers on a Toyota Tundra is more complicated than I thought. <laughs> I can work. Um, it's a lot of fun, man. It's a lot of fun. It's all good. Yeah. It's but all it's good. good. It's good. Yeah. All right, guys. Listen, we're going to let you go. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye. Are you installing that in there? I'm installing it, man. Yeah. I've been doing this for like a long, long time, so I know how to do it. All right, well, why don't you give us the tour? Oh, what's going on? Let's start at the front. Let's start at the front. Since this is, this is, uh, this is your customer. All right, hang on, hang on a second. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta. They seen you? I gotta clean the lenses. All right. Sorry about that. All right, here we go. Hey, that's better. This is now my customer. This is your customer. Hey, and ask for help. So, he says no, no habla inglés. Right. So, they have a small fuse holder, you know. <laughs> hey, 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 you can put an amplifier, another amplifier over here. So this is the 12 inches of wire. Maybe if I go like this, it'll look like 12 inches. Mm, probably but. not. <laughs> uh. So many dick jokes come to mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> You want to learn today? Right. Uh, um, right there. They just grab the grommet. Hold on one second. Uh, if you go to DNF Tool Drawer, there is a uh, list of all the videos, mm -hmm. and there is also already a playlist on YouTube for the IRTA videos. So they're already up. It's already it's already done. Um, you know how you yeah. You can yeah. See how so, it, how it works. Good morning. My RTA came in yesterday. Way finally. It's in my hand. So excited. Oh, awesome, there you go. Man. Awesome. All right. So here we go. All right. So we have a 2018 Ford F-150 aluminum body. Four fuses four feet away from the battery. Uh, yeah. Probably. It was, it was about mounted six feet. It was mounted right there where that zip tie is. Right here. That yeah. was what was holding it in place. Run it over there. Okay. Uh, if you can see it right here, they just. Oh, they just pulled the grommet. Push the grommet. Okay, so... And run the is... wire. It's no insulation. 
so perfect. This is what is this like welding? Uh, it's, I think it's the same DB DB uh, okay DB cable something DB link. Yeah, all right, like all right. So that's oh oh gonna get me with the door. Yeah. So like. Oh, so there, how long is this? This hasn't been installed that long. No, but you can see it like I was just pushing. Yeah, so that'll eventually wear through. Yeah. So cool. How many feet of each F-150 power? 19 feet. 19 feet of power and ground if you're going to go, like, right here, on, but on the back wall. So typically what's happening is, so typically what happens is we put some form of a block right there. Mm -hmm. But 19 feet is, is good. All right. So then back here, mm -hmm. what do we got back here? Uh, Wasn't screwed down. That wasn't, no, 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 not at all. So... This one, they just put it in there. The epicenter. That's what that piece there. of foam was. The epicenter was being held in place by the piece of foam. Just like that. Yeah. Um, hey, man. Where's the ground? Um, that's what I'm trying to get. Because the ground runs around here. And it's right here. Oh, you can see it? Yeah, you can. Would it be easier if you folded the seat down? No, I mean, it's like, literally. Oh. It's right here. Where the like, heck is it? Where is it going now? Right behind this. Oh. So. Now, if you are to, if you are not inclined to run a power and ground, there is a factory ground point located right here behind the seat, uh, behind the carpet. Now, let me show you some of this. Hang on. Let me grab my tool. Grab his tool. He's grabbing his tool. Hey guys, like the 911s. Ah, well, we couldn't film it because this is, uh, yeah. Um, but we just wanted to show you. So this is like real time, the fun that we get to deal with daily. Um, that was a nice shot of Fernando's butt. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, he shakes his tail feathers. Oh yeah, shaking your bonbon. Hey guys, if if your baffle on your enclosure is two and a quarter inches thick and it covers the subwoofer up, to the spider what would be the issue oh my gosh why do you have such a thick Dude. baffle <laughs> all right hold on there's more no there's more oh oh wow exactly. hang on Go got a we got a wire pretzel actually this is more like a wire strudel this is a or a uh elephant ear why is it on both oh, i'm getting blinded here there we go all right can you grab it for me yeah, hold on. There you go. Oh, wow, there's like solder all over. Look at it. Yeah, oh, look there's at, solder right solder. here. Solder. I don't know why. I don't know. So we have... Why do we have a headphone jack? Is that for the base? Oh, oh, that's why, because that's... So you have a Axis LOC. A there's a lot here. of wires going. Oh, another ground. A lot of wires. A lot of tape. A lot, a lot of tape. tape. Now, for those who have been playing at home, you guys all know that tapping into the subwoofer uh, and the rear speaker on an F-150 is not the best idea. Why is there so many wires going up into this? Like, oh my gosh, that's just, that's ridiculous. I don't know why we're redoing this. I got to be honest with you. I mean, it's, it's that's... Perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. I know. I, I, Do you need a knife? Thing. You want your knife? Yeah. Yeah, here's your knife. I wonder where they're getting the power from. Oh! I would get it from. <laughs> I see the Ooh, power. Ooh, beautiful. We went right into there. Hang on, wow. That. And yes, there is no fuse. So there's there's the power. It's wow. like a it's like a T-tap into a four gauge. Oh wow. Oh, they poked right through. Look at that! They literally just poked it right through. They threaded the needle. Well, that's that's interesting. Ah, uh, some people they definitely. It's creative. We ah. probably do the most F-150s in the country. Creative. Yes, it's amazing. It's not creative. It's amazing it how you can be cre how creativity freaking, and stupidity uh, are so uh. close together. All right, so what do we have going on? Like, is it just, they just got a bunch of wires they, going in? Yeah, they just, All right. they just, you know. 
tap into the rear speaker. Um, wow. Fernando looks stressed. It's very stressful, man. This is dumb. <laughs> like, why would you do that? So, who who did this install, Fernando? Uh, another shop. What shop, Fernando? <laughs> the shop I used to work. <laughs> the shop I used to work, yeah. They, they told me, you're never going to make it. And, hey, I'm here fixing their, their, their problems. Wow. It's Saturday. Why aren't you all at home? Uh, dude, I haven't been home on a Saturday. Uh, and I can't tell you when other than on a vacation. Like, it's, or Christmas. But, yeah. Yeah, Christmas. Yeah, we were home for Christmas. But other than that, yeah, no. You need your drill. All right, hang on. Uh, yeah, I know. I have another piece. I, I don't know what that... I was looking at that. I didn't know why the tape was on the ground. Oh, so... Oh, they soldered it together. I mean, they soldered so it. What did they solder that with? Like... That is like the worst soldering. Like Haley did a better job in the car, so we're just gonna have to cut that. Yeah, yeah, we gotta fix all and, this and, and remove. Why? Like, well, maybe when they were just going at it, they uh, they got it. Yeah. They, oh, okay. So I see. They yeah, they got the whole cut, thing. And yeah. Like, oh, oh <gasps> Yes, we were home for Christmas. Calm down, Christian. Just trying to make you feel bad about life. Wow. I mean, we really don't need any help in that category, but thanks. Oh, wow. Uh, about feeling bad about launch. Life. Uh, what can you tell me about the audio control EQX? Ooh. I gotta be honest with you. I, 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 that was before my time, man. That was before my time. Very, I, very I didn't, old. didn't really, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't do anything with them back then. So that's the bass knob? That's the bass knob. I thought there was no bass knob. Well, the only bass knob I have is the epicenter. And We're, that was right there. That was just, oh, just cross. Hanging. Oh. And that was just literally oh, just crossing. Double-sided tape. tape. See, we did know this was coming in. So the other day I did print this piece here for him because this was supposed to come in on Monday. On Monday. Um, but it, it's here early and we had time. So we're starting on it so that we can get all the stuff done and try to fix all this. Um, do you have the plate? Do you know what the plate is? Aye, aye, aye. It's in my, uh, my toolbox. Here, you want the light? Is that on the top of your toolbox? Yeah. I think I need a new truck. You need a true truck. Yeah, I Am I gonna be able to find it easily? Uh -huh. Oh, there it is. Yep. So this is, this is the new plate that we made for it. So, well, because we're putting in the LC, LC2i Pro, so we'll have the volume control for the subwoofer and the epicenter. So this will this is this will be the new base knob. This is, of course, the F150 plate that we make. Um, but yeah, I saw so it install. I saw it all my life. It's a nice looking blue truck. It is a very nice color blue. Uh, one out of ten. How many cars come in for repairs? Um, I mean, believe it or not, not as many as you would think, thankfully. Right. Uh, we do get quite a few. Um, we, we, we really wanted to film this, but it's, it's, it's like 2 o'clock, and it's going to stay the night, and I'm not going to be here Monday. So if we didn't get it done, it would kind of not flow well in the video. you want some cutters? Oh, you got some cutters. So, but, I mean when they do need to be repaired they really need to be repaired so with this we'll get it all back to normal um, yeah we get it back we'll pull the factory back. radio we'll pull the factory radio out we'll put a t-harness behind the radio um because that's way easier to do because he might eventually get highs or something so i'll grab i'll grab the harness for that uh can you show us that plate can you show us how that plate works you cut um yeah sure so this is obviously cut on the laser and what it does is if i can move his monkey just leave the monkey alone i'm not gonna spank his monkey anyways it goes right here so that's that's what it'll look like 
Monkey. That's Peter Gabriel you were singing, I hope. So that's that's what it does. And so the LC2i Pro bass knob, the up is not bass knob. D and Unifran are a true inspiration. I, I okay, I mean I'll take it. I I and we try. We like to have fun. We do car audio. Uh, it's a chilly day. It, it, yes. You're overstating the obvious. We're walking around with hoodies on. I think I think people know by now if they see us in hoodies. I mean, look at poor <laughs> Fernando here. He's got it zipped all the way up to the top. Oh, there you go. Oh no, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So screw you just just screw down into the ground. Screw you. <laughs> there you go. That's making great contact right there. Is this this feels like this is CCA, isn't it? Yeah, it feels this like is totally CCA. CCA. Yeah, they they don't use copper. Dude, There's big amp. Well, I mean, let's be honest. Does it really matter? The truck's all CCA anyway, so. Right. I yeah. mean, so for uh, <laughs> Tesla eats are you? Well, whoa, whoa, you want to see this? No, those are the voice coils. Uh, the reason why the baffle is so thick is because the flush mount wasn't matching up correctly, so I added the speaker rings to fix the issue so it's not flush mount no more ah hmm okay i see what you're saying it's, it could be an airspace issue it's yeah uh this would be a total awesome video it would be and that and we knew it would be but we figured we'd at least bring somebody some joy today and let them watch this you guys always install the remote for amps and with the printed printer one if yes why think wait a minute you guys always install the remote for amp and with the printed printer one if yes why think like the base knob i mean we always install a base knob yeah we don't always do a printed uh laser laser, laser thing cut. for it but in the f-150s we do because as you guys all know we do tons of these trucks so Anything we do tons of, we try to streamline the process, so. There you go, you wind dixie amplifier. Is the grommet and the door loose? Mm, no. That That's good. No, they didn't They didn't screw that up. No. They no. just, like, they just grabbed, it grabbed the, the hole. Yeah, so. Cut we'll, it. And just. Yeah, just... We'll, we'll cut all that off and solder it up and shrink wrap. And then we'll test the tape it back up so that yeah. it'll look factory. This is gonna be mine, because I have to build the amp board. What's that? Uh, I don't know, they just look like generics. You know? I would say Radio Shack, but they that would be insulting. Would you sell those plates? Right now, we're not selling those plates. Soon. Well, we'll have to see. What four channel amp can I go with for my R-type speakers? Um, uh, I mean, Alpine makes the R four channel amp. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to go with something with a DSP, obviously the D four point eight hundred would be really nice from audio control. Um, if you want to go active, they make the R series six channel, which has staggered power, so you could do tweeter, um, tweeter mid range, and rear, and put a ton of power to the mid base. So that that's an option. Uh, it just really depends on the budget and where you're going to put it. I don't even know where Santa Fe Springs in California. How? No, anyone out here I can go to. There is a ton of guys in California, man. I'm oh. telling you, there's a ton of guys out there. We know a ton of guys. Uh, you're here on Instagram. Type in... Uh, Fine Concepts. Agora uh, Auto Systems. Audio Systems. Audio systems. Agora but Auto go to sounds. go to Instagram, yeah. type in your city, and car audio, and that at least will get you some pictures, and you can kind of work from there. <laughs> How do you secure those base knob plates to the Ford dash? All right. What you have to do is this this piece comes off, and then the gauge cut the whole gauge trim bezel comes off behind this is a solid piece of material. So you, we have to remove that piece of material. And once you do that, the base knobs, see how this is countersunk like that? 
So this is gonna go over the front. We typically put some double-sided Tessa tape on this just for the lineup process, lining it up and holding it in place. And then when the base knobs go through, they screw this whole apparatus into place. And then with the tape on there, it, I mean, not that it would ever rattle, but the tape also has, acts as an insulator, but the, but the base knob pinches it all together. So that's how these go in. Tommy who? Who? Tommy who? The guy that ruined the show yesterday? <coughs> that guy. Ah, oh, the guy. That guy. Come on, man. Is it is it amplifier's fault if in winter the sub plays quiet and clips, but when it warms up, it plays normally? Um, one of the topics we talk about frequently is operation temperature, meaning there is a min max oh you get your ground hold baby. on oh there's there's our ground oh it's a two it's a two screwer it's a two, it's a two bag yeah, yeah. So there's the ground dude they didn't even, always dude they didn't even nothing. like no paint no yeah. nothing just two we're gonna have to put a piece of road kill over it yeah. um not that it's gonna rust we just don't want water to get through um but anyways there's a min and max temperature that a product's gonna perform properly and that's for everything subwoofers amplifiers the car itself so yes, uh, if it is really cold out there, like we know some of you guys get some really low temperatures, your amplifier might and your subwoofer might not perform properly at those temperatures. So you do have to wait till they warm up in order to perform their designated task to the best of their ability. So that, that is 100% true. Two is always better than one. Two is better than one. Uh, when are you guys going to start the Dean's Mustang? I think uh, the schedule is by 2035. <laughs> Have you guys gotten a chance to play with Stereo Integrity? No. Um, but uh, Oscar has. Oscar. Oscar's played with oh, it. Oh, dude. They're doing a C10? Really? Yeah, yeah, saw that. Yeah. yeah. Where would you recommend grounding in a 2007 Chevy Tahoe? The nice thing about 2007 Chevy Tahoe is that that car has great grounding. You can pretty much go anywhere you want. In the back. In the back, in the front, wherever, you, wherever you want to go. It's It's got a good grounding plane, so you're all right. Uh, Dean's Car Lab coming in 2024. Yeah, wishing. How come you guys... How come you guys things audio control no longer sponsor Car Audio Fab? I have no idea. We don't talk to them about other people other than ourselves kind of selfish i know but i you know it's none of my business so we we play with what we play with um you need to start selling the adapters for the tweeters for the f-150s i know i know Every guys day. gotta understand there's only so much time and right now we're, we're pushing it to the max just trying to get the whole irta2 thing going and just work six days a week and produce all the shows we have it is on the list of things to do, and I can tell you it's more than likely going to happen by the end of this year. But right now, um, it's just not in the cards. It's coming, though. The deck is on the table. Coming to town. Are the six cars going into the truck? Yeah, good. Somebody caught that. Actually, yes. So this, this box here, the customer actually made this box. He's a woodworker, and he, this is his second attempt. He made one originally, and it was way too small, and it sounded terrible. And we were like, hey, man. Make a bigger one. He says, okay. And he came back with this. He raised the seat, bought the seat lift kits, um, got it sounding good. And he's like, all right, I got it the way I want it. Now please fix my install. I was like, you got it, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'm going home. Okay. And my job is done. <laughs> Uh, what speakers can you add to the Harman Kardon system in a RAM without adding an amp to get better sound? Uh, I would not recommend changing anything in that system unless you were going to add an amp to get a better sound. Uh, that system is just like the Alpine system. It is made to play together. It is not does not play nice with strangers. And when you start changing stuff around like that, the results can be less than gratifying. So a lot of that also has to do with just the efficiency of the driver, the ohm loads that those drivers are. They're not four ohm speakers. 
Um, and, and they put a lot of effort into that, so it, it's it's tough. That's one of the harder cars to change out without going full full crazy. Um, but you know, the easiest thing to do would be some form of a front stage upgrade, Amp Pro, and that will get you the sounds you're looking for. Mm-hmm. How do you know if a shop really took their time to tune a DSP? I mean, I feel like, Fernando, I feel like if you got into a car and you listened to it, you'd know right away if there was a tune done on it. Yeah. I mean, I mean if, you, can, you, can, you can hear it right away. I would think. I don't know, though, because, I mean, we live in a different world, so... I mean, yeah. if you don't know what it's supposed to sound like, how would you know? Right. I mean, if you don't know, and it's your first experience, yeah, that's probably... I guess- well, okay, so I guess if all the sound was still coming from the driver's corner of the dash, right? that would probably be the best indicator. I would just check my crossover points. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's like what it. a lot of these guys do with the DSP. They literally no, open no, the DSP, I, they set the crossover points, and they close the DSP, safe, and they're done. Uh, but they never actually tune the car. Yeah, I mean, no they did, EQ, nothing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I think I would just... If there's no imaging, then chances are good they, they didn't yeah, tune the car. Yeah, but it can be a really nice EQ with no imaging. Perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, I get it, but I don't know. I mean, I'm just I'm just saying. Open the software and look. That's what I would do. I would check if they did something in the EQ, uh, time alignment. This is a 911 vehicle, and if you go back and watch the beginning, you can kind of see what we did here. It's a lot of fun. Um... Ooh, there is the other. What's a good double din kit oh, for goodness. Chevy Silverado Classic? Uh, for the Chevy on that one, I'm going to go uh, Pack. Pack Pack Dash Audio, the Pack kit for that. Oh, you found the base knob? I found the base knob all the way in the back. Be wow. careful, man. There might be spiders. <laughs> like yesterday. Like yesterday. Oh, and just so you guys know, we did get the spider out of the car. Yeah, it's in uh, Dean's garbage. Mm-hmm. So with all the newer cars, will it be better to run the ground to the battery? Not necessarily. It just depends on the car. Um, I mean, obviously, you could use a voltmeter and test your ground plane. Uh, Some cars are better than others, but no, not all cars. This is is aluminum, so it's a special case for sure. Dean needs an assistant. What do I need an assistant? I mean, yes, technically, okay, I say, what do I need an assistant for? It's funny, we were just talking about that the other day. When, you know, when we were talking about dreams, I was like, I'd like a personal assistant that could take care of all the, the, all the stuff, the stuff that, that I do. just don't have time for. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would love that. Uh, what's the first song you're going to put to bump those woofers? Uh, Gwen Stefani's Hollow Back Girl? No. Um, no. Uh, no, we'll probably play, uh... What is the name of the song? Hang on. Oh, alright, so Fernando's picking the song. What is your opinion of the Metro Access DSPT harness for the Chevy Silverado 2021? I mean, it's... (sighs) Hypocurrency. Hypocurrency is going to be the first song. Yeah. Um, like, their DSP is a great entry-level DSP. And if... If you're looking to build a system, like a big system off of it, I would still plan on having a better DSP. But if you're building just a small getter done system, that it's not bad. It'll get you where you need to be for most applications. Like if, you know, obviously you can't replace the radio in that car. So um, it, it's about the equivalent of a radio DSP, but it does have more features. Like there is separate channels and stuff like that. So it's, it's not, we've used them. And we've had success. Mm-hmm. Feel the bass, DJ Magic Mike. I mean, if you got the newer version of it, maybe. If there was, a, like, a remastered version of it. But, dude, like, personally, just play, like, you know, Steve Means, this, the Cy Morris stuff. And it's just, like, we have a playlist. And it's just, like, boom. You know, all this. When we did the Haley uh, quad box, we kept, we went back and took all the tracks you guys said. And we just made a playlist with that. Uh, what do you, what do you personally run in your vehicle? My, my vehicle, uh, runs with the top down and the music playing from the factory because it's kind of crappy like that. I got a bunch of stuff and one day we'll do it. Right now, Fernando's car is the lab and in the lab we have some ground zero stuff in it. So it's all, it's all the ground zero uranium stuff that the videos that are being posted right now on YouTube are 
are chronicling. Yeah. Oh, that was a fart. That was Ooh. wonderful. Um, where do you guys get your tuning music from? Pink noise, 40 hertz, 1000 hertz, test tones, etc. So when it comes to that, we use the, hold on, uh, for 20 bucks, 10 ward, it makes the Educar test and tune app for your device. I don't know if it's on Android, but I know it's on iPhone. I think it's in all. I, I mm -hmm. hope it is, because then he doesn't have to have the arguments that we have. Uh, but test, you have all your test tones here across the bottom, where you have your 40, 250, 1K, 8K, and then zero, negative five, negative 10. And then you have fader, and then you have your pink noise right there, mono pink noise. You're good, you're good, you don't have to move it. Uh, and then you can do left, right, left to center, center, and you can just do like bass, mid bass. So it's a pretty awesome app. It is. Um, other than that, if uh, Sheffield Labs makes the drive, no, not drive. What's the name of that CD? Um. Just type in Sheffield Labs and your favorite media player. iTunes has it. Uh, they have really good tracks too. You can also download test tracks for free from Rockford and Kicker. Yep. Both of those guys have uh, really good test tracks that you can download for free. Um, what we typically do, a lot of those stuff like that is we download, I have a Dropbox account and I download all of the test stuff like that that manufacturers put out. Like, like the key has test tracks. Um, the Audio Frog UMA1 has test tracks. The Audison amps have test tracks. A lot of these companies have test tracks. I just put those in a Dropbox folder and then I access them that way. What's your favorite sub, Dean? I, I, so I don't, I'm not like you guys where I have that favorite sub. It, it just really, like to me, it, bass, is, bass is like, I like a sound and I like it to do that. And when it does that, I'm happy. Uh, one of the woofers I really like is the Rockford P312. Uh, to me, it's a great sub. It's a boomy, it has the fat bass response that I like, and I don't have to put a gazillion watts of power on it, which to me is makes me happy uh, and usually makes the customers happy. So, but you know, there's go to subwoofers. They're all, everything's a tool, man, and, I, and it's just to get the job done. Can I use a iPhone as a head unit? If so, how? Um, I mean, it's gonna be no different than a, uh, an, an iPad. But the easiest way to do it, obviously, is some form of a Bluetooth device, a receiver that will receive. But then you also have to remember, you have to control your volume up and down and all that fun stuff with your phone, which can be a pain. So, you know, there are a couple Bluetooth devices that are actually volume knobs. I know Metro makes one. Um, uh, you know, there's bigger ones like Audio Control has one coming out. But there's so... You may want to look into something like that. Rockford makes a panel mount. Um, but I, I don't know if I'd want to use my phone as everything just because I'm, you're real limited on the capability. Like, there is no knob, you know. And, and so you'd have to have an amp that somehow has a knob attached to it, which there are. So, like, you could... You could take like an audio control D51300, get the AC BT24, plug it into it, get the AC ACR3 remote that'll allow you to control the master volume of the amplifier up front and then just stream to that. And then they make a control app for your phone so you can also control things from your phone as well. So, I mean, it's doable, but you're gonna have to it's going to be kludgy and you're going to have to have fun with that. It's on Android. Cool. Thank you. That they're, that they're talking about the edgy car testing tune app. Do you guys build strut walls for mids and highs? I only see you change outdoor speakers. That's what we do, man. We don't get into a lot of the big stuff like that. We kind of keep it, you know, factory locations, that kind of thing. It's kind of our specialty. Um, I'm a firm believer of, uh, pick a business model, do what you're good with, stay in your lane, any one of those cliches that you want to throw out there, and do it to the best of your ability. Um, that's it. So we, we have our style and what we like to do, 
and we stick with that because it's what we know it's what we can deliver on and it's going to make you know we're going to we're going to get guaranteed results on it anytime you have to like start stepping outside of your lane um, i'm not saying don't do it because you know jumping out of your comfort zone is always fun but on a professional level not always the smartest thing to do when it comes to deliverables Limited to 1400 watts RMS and, and SPL being the main goal, what would you perform one Q-Class 15s or three Comp C-15s custom box for both? Uh, I mean, I would, honestly, I would do three 15s over one. I don't care what they are. I'm still doing three 15s. That's way more cone area and it's three 15s. I mean... <laughs> Who, who would you rather look at? 115 or 315s in the back of your car? No, 315s looks better. Yeah, I, I would definitely do three. I still think you're going to get more power out of the 315s. Um, but yeah, I would do 315s. Uh, what mono amp can I go for with my kicker L7R? I mean, I run a Key 501 on it. I have that in Haley's car. Um, we run that one on it and on all installation wise all the time. Uh, I think the 801 is probably too big, but I mean, uh, do the key 501 or something in that five to 600 watt range. That would be perfect. How did Tacoma sound once finished? Sounded great, sounded great. Uh, we were we were really happy with it. We we finished it this morning, jammed out a little bit, actually jammed out a lot of bit, and uh, moved on to the next one. You know, you don't get attached. Uh, best budget subwoofer is definitely Ground Zero Iridium series. Okay, I have one up front. I eventually got to listen to it. I got I'm gonna I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy a Gately box, and I say that only because I don't know when I'm gonna do it, but I need to. Dean, for a thousand bucks, what system would you choose? Um, can I get more wishes, please? Um, a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks, man. So if I only got a thousand bucks to play with, I really have to have a deep conversation with whoever it is I'm trying to design this for because it's not going to be done with a thousand bucks. Like you're not building a start to finish system that's going to make you get what you want. You're going to settle. Like if you try to do an amp and speakers and a radio and all that for a thousand bucks, you're settling like a mother. Like you're you're literally just ticking boxes on a piece of paper and not getting anything that in the end is gonna make you happy. Like if you have a car with no stereo, you got a thousand bucks, you put a radio, four speakers and an amp in the back and you get all like no name brand stuff, that's what you're getting. But if, uh, if I have one of my customers and we got a thousand bucks, I need to talk to you and figure out exactly what's missing in your life. And we're going to have to figure out how money. we're going to turn it into <laughs> yeah, money. <laughs> uh, we're really going to have to talk about how to make this system work because we're going to need more pieces to the puzzle. So we would probably, that would be a part one for sure. We'd have to start and figure out what, what is most important, what is our hopes, dreams, and desires, and just kind of work out from there. Um, you know, do we need new front speakers? Do we need a small amplifier and some speakers? Is it not loud enough? Do we need a radio first? You know, so there's a lot that goes on, you know, but a thousand bucks in today's, you know, you're getting some, you get subs. Yeah. And you're going to be putting it in yourself at that rate. So, but hey, you know, booted to AC app, ACR3 was going to say that. There you go. Well, yeah, I think you've done that, Kristen. Dean, on a budget, what would you recommend subs and speakers? If I, okay, so if I'm like going for super like budget, but I still want like really awesome stuff, I'm gonna be looking at the, the Kenwood stuff. I'm either looking at Kenwood, I'm looking at maybe some entry level uh, Focal, like the Auditor stuff, but if I wanna start to finish, like I want amp, subs, speakers, all that stuff, I'm gonna look like, the Focal, I'm sorry, the, the Kenwood line of speakers, like their their subs are sound really good and come in awesome enclosures. Uh, their speakers are priced right. Uh, the amplifiers are definitely priced right. So, but there again, I, I don't know what 
What budget? What budget? I mean, you what know, I'm that? still, you're still spending, you're still spending money. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just, you're, you're getting better stuff. What's good? Separate tweeter and mid range. Uh, I don't think that's enough to the question. What is the best budget uh, friendly RTA? Is there one? Yeah, there's, yeah. there's. Okay. Mine. <laughs> Mine. Yeah, the IRTA too. You can get it at dnftooldrawer.com. That's dnftooldrawer.com. Uh, all right. So let's think about RTA for a minute. Okay. So there's two types of RTAs. Two functions. Two functioning types of RTAs. There's an acoustic RTA that uses a microphone, and there's an electrical RTA that measures over the wire. All right. The IRTA2 that we just came out with is designed to measure the electrical signal. That is the more expensive option. That is the one that costs more. The microphone side of things, that can be done reasonably affordably. Um, so, for example, let's open this up here. Hold on. Ah, get to the tool drawer. So you can get an eye test mic. So this is an eye. This is for an eye device. This is the eye test mic. This is acoustical. It comes with a microphone in the bag. Um, so you have this microphone right here. You can get this from Audio Control or you can get it from Studio Six. Either way, this this will allow you to do acoustic measurements on an eye device. Now, if you don't have an eye device, they actually make a cheaper version called the U test mic. And the U test mic has, um, I think this is it here. I know it gets its own shelf. It's special. The U test mic is designed to work with everything, uh, laptops and Android phones. So this is the U test mic. It looks identical. It just has a standard USB on the end. And of course it works with all these softwares here uh, and all these products here. So you can still connect it to an eye device with the camera connection kit. That just allows it to go from USB to, uh, to, to lightning. So this is, this is, this one's even more affordable. Um, anyways, now this will get you the audio side of things. Another one that will get you the audio side of things is this guy here, which is the UMI one from audio frog. Now, he designs the whole kit for you. He has great tutorials on how to use REW, right? REW? Um, and it comes with a CD. Tell you right now, you're paying 200 bucks for this for the CD. This one's like 149. I think that one's like 139. It was anyways when we got them. And this one is was 199. The CD's worth it. This has got an awesome CD. We actually just bought it because of the CD. I'm not gonna lie, I love the CD. It's got great test tracks. It's Andy did an amazing job on the CD. Now, this this was the Educar Phase Summer, and this is kind of this is designed to work with dude. Sorry. This is designed to work with like one of these or this and do the summing aspect of it. Uh, I are, you know, but it was electrical, but you still have to have a, a more expensive RTA. Whereas if you get the, this guy, the IRTA2, this is designed to work with a phone, like an iDevice or an iPad. It has to be an iDevice or an iPhone. Um, or it, as well as those devices. And now you can measure electrical. So reality is that's 249. Those are like 150. So for through 400 bucks, you can have both and great versions of both. And that's the thing, like, like these little handhelds are cool and they're fun and they're nice. They're 600 plus dollars, if not $800. But dude, trying to tune with a screen this small is like, yeah, those you get giant screens and whatnot. Um, and then of course you can pick up one of these guys for Six hundred bucks. bucks? Yeah. Six hundred bucks. Now this will do everything, but you have to be plugged into a laptop in order to do this. So drawbacks, limitations, and whatnot. But regardless of any of it, whichever way you decide to go, you got to get one because they're going to make your lives so much better. Hey guys, Chili. Got to stay warm. We'll do.
All right, so we answered a ton of questions there. Sorry that took so long. I just wanted to make sure we, we covered that thoroughly because, well, we have a vested interest in it. We want you guys to buy an RT, an IRT, too, from DNF Tool Drive. How do you add subs to a factory GM truck with an 8-inch display non-bows? Tap the passenger front speaker. Get a uh, really nice high-level to low-level adapter. Really nice high level. Don't get one of the cheap ones. You know, I would recommend the LC- LC1i. Thank you. The LC1i. Um, Pre order an epicenter. Oh, we're going to have a special order code. I talked to Matthew last night. I can't talk about it yet. Uh, but if you're, go- if you're thinking about getting an epicenter micro and you're going to order it from Audio Control, wait. It's not available yet, anyways. It's like it's not shipping yet, but trust me when I say wait. Um, cause we're working with them for a, a code and I, I can't say anything more, but just, just wait, just wait. Give, give me till next week and uh, I'll let you know. Uh, what's good. All right. Answer that question. All right. LC2i. LC2i will work fine. Um, I like the LC2i Pro because it comes with a base knob. It's thinner and it has load resistors. Not that you need any of this stuff. If you get a deal on an LC2i, just do it. You'll be fine. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the LC1I is, LC1I is the line is is the easiest thing you need. So like a lot of people are like really, you know, I don't want to. Sp- okay, the LC1I is designed to do that. It gives you the high end, awesome line driver, uh, high low to low level drop adapter at a extremely reasonable price. Uh, DNF, I need you guys help. We do what we can. Um, all right, guys, listen, I got to get to work. Fernando's been working. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, make sure you tune in tonight. Six. Six o'clock. YouTube. We'll be live. We'll be answering more questions. We can have more fun. We'll see you guys then. See ya.